height of cut. Now this is one of those topics in greenkeeping that's completely site specific due to the large amount of variables which can range from the grass type, weather, region, budget, staff and everything else in between. However, there are some important rules of thumb to be kept in mind. The biggest of these is to avoid cutting off more than one third or 33% of the leaf at any one time to avoid stressing the grass. When lowering the height, it should be done gradually over time following the one third rule. Incremental changes in the height will allow the grass to adapt more readily, helping to avoid negative effects on the sward. You can find recommendations and temporary mowing heights online for each grass species. Now, mowing heights can be varied seasonably to improve turf responses to changes in weather. Available sunlight, such as during early spring, summer stress tolerance and cold hardening. Now, in the early spring, grasses rapidly grow and can be mowed much closer without negatively affecting the overall plant health. And it's at this time of year that close mowing can control thatch, increase turf density, remove dead leaf tissue and promote earlier green up. In the summer, by contrast, a higher cut helps moderate the stress levels through means such as insulating the crown from heat and stress, reducing weed competition and reducing water needs. The height you choose can also vary greatly and be limited by the sports being played on the surface. The best example of this would be a cricket outfield, which during the cricket season would typically be mown at 15 to 25 mil during the playing season. Usually the same outfield is then used for football or rugby, which the heights are raised for 25 to maybe 50 mil, uh, depending on the climate and the sport. This is all due to the ball roll and the playing characteristics of the surface. Now before I share some final tips, I want to quickly go over one important topic. There are two main components in the mowing height. One being the bench setting, which is the height of cut which the mower is set at in the workshop. And two being the effective height of cut, which is the actual height of cut when out on the field. Now this can vary due to thatch levels, groundwater and the surface condition. And, and this is because of the gap left between the rollers and the bedding knife when going over undulating surfaces or thatched areas. Now it's important to recognise that these two components are rarely, if ever, the same and the height which the mower is set at may not actually be the height of cut out on the field. So some final tips to remember. Now taller grass varieties should be mown frequently at a height gradually decreased until the height of cut is achieved. In shaded areas, the height of cut should be increased by at least 30% to help improve turf south. Now this is achieved having more leaf area which leads to more photosynthesis in a low sunlight area. Now you should always try where possible to increase the height of cut in times such as drought as much as you can allow to hold on to that moisture in the leaf and increase the photosynthesis capacity and rooting depth of the plant. And if you'd like to know more about International Greenkeepers Fire, you can find us online at www.internationalgreenkeepers.com.